Hey, I'm here with the source code that I've just generated with scaffold hub. I've used the sample entities, but you of course can generate your own. First thing you want to do is to install the dependencies. Then we want to set up the database. So Scaffold Hub predefines a database for you, but you're free to change it. And also we will create the app user, that's the user that we use on the application. Uh, we use the Postgres only for migrations. The command we need to run is the setup. Oops. This command generates the migration file and runs it. Now we can start the application. So we have an issue that is expected because I uh, generated the application using membership based subscription and that requires Stripe to be configured. Uh, I don't want to configure all those variables now so I will just change the subscription mode to disabled. Okay, app is running, so let me show you how to debug the application, which will be very useful since this is a new code base for you. I will debug the sign up process, so let's start with the controller. I'll place a debugger here. And I'll also debug the component from the front end. All right, so for the front end, we need to open the Chrome Dev Tools. And it worked. Uh, we can see the the variables here that I just passed in the form. As I continue the execution, it stopped on the back end on the controller, and I can see the variables I passed in the body. So let's continue the flow. Uh, we don't have recapture configured and it creates the user. Okay, so now the application requires email verification and have the email configured, but the console outputs the, the body of the email when it's not configured, so I'm using a multi-tenant application, so I need to create the first tenant. I also need to complete my profile. Next, let me show you how to run the tasks. But first, you need to configure the task database. For security reasons, it has this placeholder, uh, but you can change and, and use this database that will be clean on each task, so be careful. So I'll run the backend task. Okay, forgot to save. Yep. So while it runs, let me show you the example of the test. And this is the sign up test. Uh, here we see some tests of validations. 
yeah so we need to mock the email sending Okay, so enter, so we don't have to wait all tests to run. Uh, let's run now the end-to-end -end test. While it starts the test, let me show you the sign-up test file. Yeah, in this file it clicks on the sign-up and then validates that the password is too small. The end-to-end -end test is more interactive. You can choose the test you want to run. I will run the sign-up ones. And a cool thing is that you can see the robot running the tests. And you, of course, can run them all at once. I will stop execution so we don't have to wait. We have multiple translations for the app, so you can find dictionaries here in the translation folder. You can see the English dictionary. Spanish one okay so if you need to add the new language you you, you should add, add it here so these tiles you probably won't change this is just boilerplate code for Tailwind the shared folder contain files that are shared between all the features. So we have the tests, utilities, some schemas, uh, some utility methods, hook, yeah, errors, controllers, utilities, components. The Prisma folder contains Prisma utility files and also the schema, mainly the schema. So before we talk about the features, let's talk about the roles. Roles are customizable, uh, the app is shipped with the admin role that has access to everything and a custom role that has a very limited access to read only but you can customize everything, right? You can create more roles, rename this one, it's up to your application context. So I'll use the product as an example of feature. Let me create a product to illustrate better. So let's first talk about triggers. This file contains the scripts to create the role level security that isolate products for a specific tenant. So if you create a product for tenant A, it won't be seen on tenant B, for example. And also audit logs to, for, for each action that happens on the product table. The storage, it contains the configuration for the files that we upload, in this case, the photos. And we have the folder, that is where the file is stored under the bucket. And the max size and bytes, which is a validation the bucket does when you try to upload the file. The schemas file contains all the ZOD validations for the entire uh, feature. So for example, if you try to save a product uh, with wrong data, if the validations, they are configured here. 
and not just for the farm but also for the import process and other controllers in the permission file we configure the permissions for each individual action we can have on the product for example the admin can create the product but the custom can only read it and by the way we also have the allowed storage which is if the user has this permission he can also have permission to save files on that storage the product label is the function it's called when we want to reference a product for example here when we have referenced this product we use the name so the headphone exporter mapper map fields for the export to a csv feature The product doesn't have a numerator, so let me show you the customer one. So the customer has gender as a numerator. And that's used here on the enumerator field. The API docs file is an index for the feature to export the documentation configuration. So in this case, we are seeing the product ones, yeah. And as you see, we configure the method, the path, and also the schema that is passed. The API call wraps the calls we make from the front end to the back end. The pages are located at the pages folder. Let's open the product list page. And we have the special meta generate metadata and it has access to the dictionary that we pull depending on the lock local and it has autocomplete. So if you even if you if you delete this, uh, the system will alert that this key is missing. And we validate the permission of the user before the page renders so the it ha, it receives the context which has the dictionary the current user membership tenant subscription so if the user doesn't have permission he is redirect to the home page the controller handles the backend so it also validates the permission on the back end and it parses the query using Zod. So this way we have auto completion on the variable. And because of Prisma, we also have auto completion on the criteria that we are building. And here we are fetching the products using Prisma and fetching the count because we need in the table. Also, we populate the download URL of the files. So this is a boilerplate code, you won't change it, but it goes to the objects and find files and then populates the download URL because most files will be private. You don't want people without access to, to access the file. So it signs the URL before sending to the user. So the controller has all the logic, but Next.js requires that you use the API in, in this format inside the app di directory. So 
here we have the call to the controller that we just passed the, the query object and the context. I forgot to mention, but the pages are also placed on the app directory, but they are just an export to that file I just showed you. The reason is I don't really like the folder based routes, so this is a way to keep all the files on the features folder. And in the components folder, we have the components that use the client capabilities. So they have to be separated from the page. In this product list specific page, we use the search params as the state. So when you filter by name, this name goes to the URL. And there's just one product, but also pagination is included in the URL. And we use React table for managing tables. In this example, uh, this is the name, and we are rendering a link to the product page. And here's the call to the React query. It's using the API call that we have in the other file. And here's the use of the React table. And here we are rendering the, the data table component here. This was just an overview. Each feature deserves its own video, which I plan to do. But I hope this is enough for you to get started and be productive using Scaffold Hub. Thank you for watching.